Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome back to some more Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Today, we are diving in and taking a look at a very awesome mod I highly recommend you guys check out, and that is the Improved Garrison mod. I've used this mod several times in a lot of my campaigns, but the most recent update has gone ahead and severely improved the UI elements, which now, I think, makes it so accessible to basically anybody who wants to use it. Basically, what this mod does, if you've never heard of it, is if you own a castle or a city, you can go ahead and completely re-evaluate the way that garrisons work. It allows you to send out recruiters to recruit men to reinforce the garrison. So if you always want to have a 100 men in one of your castles, you can uh, task the garrison to actually take care of that. And they will send out soldiers to go to local towns and recruit men and bring them back. You can also set them to go ahead and and recruit prisoners you can send off soldiers on patrol you can use it as a training ground to craft you a new army for when you are in wars and you need soldiers to be brought into the castles to be trained to then reinforce your men is a really awesome mod and today i'm going to go ahead and run through all the new changes and basically just give you kind of a brief idea of exactly how it works and uh, obviously i'll link it down below in the description but i really do recommend it so obviously the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need the city so we're currently sieging one right now uh, with my thousand man army me, but I definitely did not cheat to grab so we'll go ahead and conquer the city right away uh, also take some of our prisoners because that'll be kind of useful to show off as well also have some beautiful looking Roman soldiers as my front line ready to throw themselves into the breach once more again if you're wondering what mods I'm using I've got the Eagle Rising mod on um, as well as Cal Radio Expanded as well so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and show some mercy to the city and we will conquer it. And now we have been brought into the city. So now that we own this castle, you don't need to be a kingdom. So this will work for all of your campaigns when you're just joining a faction and they're granting you firsts as well. You can utilize that. But here we go. We have the new and improved, improved garrison screen. You can go ahead and just turn it away like that. It also has a very, very good tutorial as well. If you click this button and ask for the tutorial, it'll basically run through everything that you need to know about uh, with regards to the stuff so you, can, you know, if you're ever stuck on something you can go ahead and go through all of this and you can see it's quite lengthy so it does have a lot of information here if you do want to go through it all but again you can I, I, I personally didn't read this and I have a good idea about exactly how everything works you can also go ahead and edit the configuration as well so if you feel like oh I love the way that my soldiers are coming in, but they're maybe upgrading a little bit too quickly. Uh, so then you can go ahead and just turn down the XP. You're like, oh, I just want to have as many armies as possible. And I want these guys to be training. Then you turn up to, like really far. You can edit loads of stuff. When again, I love the fact that we have like kind of this customizability in this is really cool. You can go ahead and basically adjust everything. Um, so yeah, here we go. So obviously, first things first, we're going to need to have to put some soldiers inside of the garrison so we can do some stuff. So I'll just put in, I don't know, all of these legionaries into the garrison. There's some wounded. And obviously many not wounded um so yeah as you can see on the overall you can see our first that we currently have it's uh currently a zero garrison because i need to play a, t a second for it to kind of register the city itself is making 1200 gold and it's also losing a lot of food obviously this is right at the beginning of the game so food stockpiles didn't have time to go up but if i was to go ahead and wait really quickly and you, you can already start to see because i put 200 of the most elite soldiers in the game inside the garrison this city is now losing us 1200 gold so it's a real nice way of us just kind of keeping track of this and seeing exactly what's going on and it's just a great way of spelling out because I, I did feel like in the previous versions of improved garrison it did run away with you very quickly with just you building these huge garrisons and then all of a sudden you can't afford them and you end up losing loads and loads of money. Um, however, you know, now this is a great way. It shows you exactly and you can kind of adjust this accordingly. You can also send out recruiting parties, like I said. So, for example, if I wanted to send out a recruiter to go and get me some more soldiers for this garrison, you know, whether it's low tier units, high tier units, whatever, uh, whether it's cavalry, I can definitely go and do that. So, for example, I'll go to this. So, the maximum number of troops that can be recruited right here is a hundred i'm not gonna let that go any higher it's gonna just be a hundred um right there you can also turn on some recruiter things as well so i can i can tell the recruiter if i want to to only recruit elite units i can tell them to uh recruit uh the recruiter only to elite elite troops and only recruit elite troops 
Yeah, I don't exactly know what the difference are between these. They kind of seem like they are the same. You can also change the culture of which faction your recruiter goes, goes ahead and recruits from. We're going to pick this faction because this is the faction we've currently taken. So we'll, we'll set that to that. And also you can tell the amount of uh, soldiers, again, that they, the recruiter does want to get. So for example, we'll go ahead and do this. I will send out 100... I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. So this is how many soldiers we should send the recruiter out to get. So we'll say, come back when you have 120 men. So when your party size hits 120... Well, we'll set it to 100. I think the limit is 100 anyway. Anyway, uh, but obviously include this also includes his army as well. So whenever he hits 100 men, come back to the garrison. But remember, the recruiter can only ever recruit uh, up to 100 men. So he's going to get that 100 soldiers, bring it back to the garrison, um, and then leave it at that. We'll also tell him to recruit from this culture as well, and then we'll send out the patrol. So for example, if I go ahead and send out... I don't want to send out the wounded, though, which is kind of annoying. Uh, whatever, we'll send, out, we'll send out this many men. So, for example, this is, what, 74 men. He's going to go out, he's going to recruit 26 soldiers, come back to the castle, go out, recruit another 26 soldiers, come back to the castle, up until he hits that 100 troop limit. So, it's a really nice way of doing that. Obviously, I'll click this, and then as you can see right there, the, uh, the garrison recruiters are right there, and we'll send them out. Obviously, we'll protect them from the people we're fighting. He'll move in, he'll take some supplies. I think that's exactly what he's doing. Okay, so we've got the recruiter out there. I think something with the wounded soldiers was causing some issues. I also went ahead and set this recruiter to also go ahead and just recruit any soldiers that he wants to go ahead and do. So he's going to head off now and recruit me some soldiers. Uh, I think he's figuring out exactly where he needs to go. And uh, yeah, he'll basically go off to other towns and he'll go and recruit any men. I set the culture to any, but again, you can set it to yours. I think I messed it up because I, originally I sent him to recruit from this culture. Um, but again, I've taken their their settlement over so it would be my culture which you can easily do as well um again i'll just tend to return right now really quickly but yeah you can just set him to recruit from your cities as well uh by doing return recruiter um and then oh i guess he can't do it right now because he's not back here but you just go down to here to this neutral culture and i think that's my culture and then he'll focus on recruiting these soldiers right here because it kind of switches over as well as that you also obviously can do training as well so that you can just turn on vanilla training if you want so if you just want your soldiers to upgrade like normally like when you do have the managed town and you're upgrading here you can do that quite easily obviously with the uh, garrison barracks and also the militia training ground which is right here that gives you experience uh, however if you want to go obviously and use the improved garrison training you can click that and then you know, your soldiers will get trained the more they stay there you can also add a template as well to adjust the way in which your soldiers upgrade as well so if i click on the imperium you can see if i, I go tell my recruiters so if i have any of these training so if i have any of the uh, soldiers from this troop tree uh, i guess it would be better to go down to the actual normal low tier legionaries right above the bottom um if i was to select say the, the empire levy let's do it with the empire so for example if i was to go ahead and select these guys i would basically be like okay i want i want this garrison to produce me 200 of these really elite uh, legionary trios and then basically if i have anything that can go into these legionaries they will upgrade to them and then when they hit this rank they will stop you know the garrison will uh, try its best to go ahead and create this template and create these units and obviously you can adjust this with archers uh, so for example if i wanted some daisy and archers I could go here and be like, okay, you know, whenever we have Dacian troops in the garrison, I want you to upgrade them to these Batanian high warriors, which obviously don't really work. And then again, the garrison will be like, okay, if we get anything in this troop tree, we will upgrade them until we hit 710 Batanian highborn warriors. And again, if I have you know, soldiers from the Kuzite lands, that won't really affect it. They'll just upgrade normally and the AI will pick randomly what you wanted to do. You can also as well set the AI to certain upgrades as well. So if you're like, okay, uh, basically, if there's not a template for it, just upgrade the troops to tier 4 and uh, leave them there. Don't upgrade them any further. And again, that'll be a big help for actually going ahead and uh, adjusting the way at which your wages affect you yourself. Because again, once you start getting a lot of settlements, that'll be really bad. You can also order patrols as well, so I can go ahead and adjust the patrol. Have I taken all the garrison out? Um... Oh, yeah, I can create anyone here, sorry. Yeah, so for example, if I wanted my lands to be nice and safe, I could send out 109 of these warriors, and they'll be on the patrol, and then I can go ahead and tell them exactly what I want them to do. Do I want them to patrol? Do I want them to escort? And I can also tell them to escort parties as well. I believe I can also do this with caravans. Uh, so if I have a caravan going, I can go ahead and adjust a guard to go and protect them. Obviously, I'll be paying for it, so you have to really weigh that up. If you want, say, a, a, a caravan to have a couple more soldiers in it, you can do that, which is really, really cool. And then finally, 
finally, obviously, as well as that, you have a bunch of things you can adjust right here as well, um, where you can, uh, you know, kind of just kind of make auto creation. You can let, allow them to sell horses and buy, uh, recruit prisoners and just improve their armies that way from their battles. And then you can also go ahead and set up a transfer list as well. So, for example, I don't actually have any troops in my garrison, but I could also transfer garrisons around. So I could have one mega garrison that then sends troops out to protect the other ones as well, which is really cool. And you can also go ahead and copy, uh, you know, your settings to all castles as well um, or just specifically copy it to another castle specifically uh, which again is really cool so you can really adjust it so maybe you want a certain template for your cities and a certain template for your castles uh, which is really nice but that's going to be it that's going to be improved garrison honestly i am super impressed this new ui is absolutely spectacular definitely a mod i'm going to be using in my next campaigns because it's going to make training armies is going to make uh, defending castles so much better than it previously was as well as protecting your own settlements this mod is also save game compatible as well as long as you have the right versions of games there are maybe some mods it might conflict with obviously other mods that adjust the garrisons uh, might also cause issues but you can just go ahead and download this stick this into your campaign and load it into a save game you already have again make sure you make a backup save just in case but for the most part you know this has been proven to work i've tried it actually and it has worked as well uh really really awesome so as soon as i update to 1.6.1 i will be checking this out so if you guys enjoy this video make sure you drop a like and a comment down below let me know what you thought of this mod and if this is a mod that you are going to be using in the future and i'll see you guys in the next one